What is up, you guys? Today, we got another quick post from the Neville Sub. This one is, again, from Pikuko. It is called Stop Trying to Get Your Desires. So here it is. If you are trying to get something, it means you don't have it. When you do get your desire in your 3D, you'll be like, oh, I already knew I was getting it. I had imagined I would. Like, it does not feel like a total surprise. The reason is that this whole 3D world is dead. You can't get anything from it. There's nothing to get from it. Instead, you give yourself in your imagination. Some people used to have, an imag have imaginary worlds in their heads when they were kids. It is exactly like that. Honestly, if something goes wrong in your 3D, just go in your imaginary world, have some fun there, relax. Just say, oh my gosh, I'm not dealing with that. I'll just chill in my brain. It is escapism, but who cares? Just because it's fun, you know? Not because you're trying to get something. I know it's hard for people who are going through really hard situations, but literally be delusional. What is there to lose if you just stop and imagine everything is fine for two minutes? Yesterday, I was imagining that it was raining money from the sky and some people around were super happy collecting it. I don't know. It felt good seeing people happy. Today, I found this toy type of money that kids play with and made it into a paper plane on my windowsill. I think the kids of the family that live upstairs in my building were playing. Here is the pick. I didn't try to get anything. It just showed up in an unexpected way. I think I'm getting money in some way anyways, but this showed me that it doesn't have to be a chore. I don't have to try. Honestly, stop trying. Start having. So, Interestingly, interestingly stated here. So we have a few comments here. Sleep Junkie 22 says, it's like Neville said, if it works, then what does it matter if the world, what the world thinks? So yeah, be delusional. Uh, Presley Moore 101 says, the key here is non-attachment. Gravity B1 says, Neville was a visual person, so he taught what he knew. FYI, for those who aren't visual like me, your imagination doesn't just mean pictures, it's the thoughts also in your head, could also be what you hear, auditory in your head, all is mind. Mind means everything going on in your head, thoughts, feelings, pictures, sounds, etc. And I agree, this is very um, much on point. I just posted a video very recently, I'll link it right here, about the differences between a lot of what Neville says and what Joseph Murphy says. And I say in that video this exact thing, that Neville tended to be more into sats, more into imaginal acts, because I believe he was primary visual. Of course, we all have these different senses and different preferences and different on a different on a scale. And I think Neville also liked audio as well. That's why he has after he has like thank you, thank you, and imagining, and he brings in auditory things into his imaginal acts. Um, and he does emphasize also using senses like hearing, touching, smelling, etc. But Joseph Murphy tended to really hone in on affirmations. And so it's just a matter of personal preference, really, at the end of the day. And, you know, I would, and again, I'll restate this here, like I said in that video, I, the reason I like affirmations so much is because they're so easy to do. You can do them during other things. You can do them in the background while you're watching a video. You can play affirmations on the background while you're doing your chores. You can be in line, affirming to yourself. You can be driving, affirming to yourself. It's not as easy you have to kind of sit down and have a special visualization session when it comes to visualization, when it comes to creating your imaginal acts. But with that being said, both are valid, both work. And so there's no need to really have this debate. You know, like, like I said, I like affirming because you can just do it at any time, anywhere almost. So the last comment, I'll just read this last comment here. So is that I had this shift I had this shift experience today from having to wanting. The wish completely dissolved. I sat next to a really nice man. At first, he ticked off a lot of boxes. We talked to each other, seemed very nice, had no ring, seemed interested. I was thinking at first, this is the type of guy that's mine. I was imagining him asking for my number. Until I started doubting and wanting. That's when things switched. We talked for a while, got separated for a while, got back into the Signert. I don't know if that's something in Europe or something foreign, but okay to each other, and while we talked for the second time, suddenly, the feeling of wanting kicked in. It was like someone flipped a switch. Before, he was eagerly telling me about his job and showing me stuff on his phone. The second I switched, he closed off and started playing mindlessly some numbers game on his phone. 
We sat there for the next hour without exchanging a word. He was pretty much not interested when our ways went in different directions. My manifestations have become so powerful that I realized I need to watch my thoughts with extreme care. It's insane. I've had experiences just like that too, where it's almost like the, the moment that you shift the way that you feel, there's a visible change in the outer reality. There's a visible shift in the person you're talking to, in the situation, the circumstance. So the so Ram Zero post, you don't need to watch your every thought, especially negative ones. This happened to me a few times until I remember Neville saying, you are the awareness behind the thought or something like that. Now, if I do encounter them, I pause for two seconds and just remember I am awareness and that the thought is just fleeting without any specific meaning. Doing this takes the weight of the attention of it, which effectively nullifies these undesired thoughts and I get back to my desired state of being. Hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, maybe that's one way of handling that, you know? Uh, thinking, oh yeah, well this thought, it doesn't matter. Like, it's fine, it's all good. And then like that is an example of kind of creating your own your own rules or your own way of handling things yourself. You just dissolve it from, of the emotional tie that it has. So it's one way of doing it. Uh, one way that I like I mentioned before is like turning it into a joke or kind of like making a lighthearted comment about it, making it more lighthearted. So anyways, guys, with that being said, uh, interesting little post here. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. How do you deal with those conflicting thoughts? What is your opinion on this? You don't need to watch the thoughts. He says, until he remembered Neville saying, you're the awareness behind the thought. You know, I think affirming can be a really good way to counteract negative thoughts too. Affirm the opposite and give that a try. But anyways, guys, like I said, drop me a like, drop me a comment, hit me with a subscribe and me and Mochi will see you guys in the next video. Say goodbye.